All right, what's up guys? Here I am on my Hunter No Skill, and today we're going to do the Dire Maul North Tribute Run solo. Uh, there's already tons of videos out there, but uh, my friends in the guild wanted to see how I do it, so here's a video of how I do it. Uh, but I did watch from Arleus and learn from him. But anyway, there's a couple macros that you need before you start. One is a pet passive. I guess you could just hit the button on your pet bar, but I like to have a physical key, so I made one slash pet passive, and I put it on a key bind here. The other one that we need is this Eyes of the Beast macro with a pet stay on it. So slash cast Eyes of the Beast, slash cancel aura Eyes of the Beast, and slash pet stay. Uh, the reason that we need to use the, both of these, I'll give you an example here. So let's put my pet on stay back here in the corner. And if I want my pet to aggro this mob and pull this mob back to this location here, I can send the pet in and then put the pet on stay or you know, on passive, and it'll go back to where I had him stay. So put your pet on stay, send it into a mob, and then hit the button for pet passive, and it should go back to this location here instead of following me back to my location. So we're going to use this uh, many times uh, in the run to try and get to the boss. So really need that. The other one that we need here, Eyes of the Beast. Oh, what the hell? I canceled it. So here we go, Eyes of the Beast. And when I hit the button again, my pet will stay wherever I, wherever I set it. Oh, I didn't. Jesus. Here we go. I have to mash the button. You have to mash it a couple times to make sure that the pet stays there. So if you try to do it manually, it doesn't really work. The pet will always like run back to your location. So you need this macro to make him stay over there. And we'll show you why we need this when we get to the boss. Uh, a couple other things that you need is engineering so you need large sephorium charges to open the door at the top i think regular sephorium charges will work too but i have larges so i'm gonna use it and then iron grenades and lastly invisibility potions uh because there is a place in there where we have to do a, a large skip with an invis pot pretty cheap to make though uh so it's not too bad but anyway the other thing that i must tell you guys is once you enter the zone you're gonna start the patrols of the mob so you need to be ready to go as soon as you enter because then the the mobs are going to be, you know, in in the right position for you. Alright, here we go. Cheetah on. Put my pet on stay right here. As soon as I aggro this guy, I'm going to scatter him. Run jump onto the wall here and then jump forward. If we aggro this mage, we kind of have to stay here so he doesn't cast frostbolt on us. Oh. He didn't start casting yet. I think I'm going to outrange it right here. Yep. Okay. Now I can go behind this pillar. As soon as these guys de-aggro me, we're going to run through the triple pack to my right right here. Throw an iron grenade from ranged so that they don't run up to you and uh, melee you while you have cheetah on. Get around this corner here. Feign death. As soon as we exit combat, you can pick yourself back up. Run jump onto this ledge here so you don't aggro these guys. King uh, Fingus should be over there, so it's safe to move up. Then we should get another pat coming up this ramp right here. There they are. <clears throat> Come over here, grab the key. We gotta wait for this pat to move a little bit further to the right so we can run past here. Uh, actually, I'm just gonna fucking go for it. If I aggro anything, I'm gonna scatter like this guy and then jump over this ledge right here. Get on this side and feign death right here, and then they should go back up, and we should be good to go. So, pick yourself back up, hug this corner right here so you don't aggro these guys, and then use the key that we just picked up in the courtyard to open the door. Summon the pet and put him on stay right here. Then we're going to set up on the right side over here send the pet in on the warlock and then as soon as he aggros we're gonna put him on passive and then he should go back to his spot that i put him on stay earlier all the way over there then we're gonna run past these mobs there should be an eye wandering up right about now so when we see the eye we're gonna kill it feign death here there's the eye coming up okay Arcane shot, auto shot, should kill it. Boom. Then we're going to re-summon the pet. Summon the pet, heal him up. Then I like to put the pet on stay here, and then I go over 
to this side over here. Be careful when you're crossing. Hug the wall. Okay, then we're going to send the pet on this guy. And then we're going to send him back up to those guys over there. And that way these guys run through this right side as I go down the left side over here. We're going to kill this rat. And then Fane right here. We got to kill this rat because we're going to use an explosive trap to AoE uh, all these, you know, bugs down and stuff like that. So that's why we're going to kill this rat because it's going to pre, you know, set up our set, set our trap off. And then when you get up here, you got to be really careful not to back up too much because you're going to re-aggro these guys over here. So kind of hover around this middle area. I'm going to revive the pet and heal him up. Okay, heal up the pet, feed him. Then I'm going to set my trap down right here as I eat. Then I'm going to take off. My pet has a ranged attack, lightning breath. I'm actually going to turn that off. Because if I send the pet in, it's going to lightning breath this guy and it's going to run towards me. So I'm going to turn off lightning breath so I can send the pet in all the way to this location. So now we're going to wait for all these swarmers to gather up on my pet. And when they do, I'm going to iron grenade all of them. Pop my cooldowns, do some AoE here. We should aggro all of them. They're going to run into my trap. Then I'm going to feign trap again. Turn on Aspect of the Cheetah so I can get some uh, dodge going over here. And then now we're going to just auto attack all these guys down. So kind of close call there, but you should be okay. Double explosive trap. If you want it to be safer and kind of nuke them down faster, I guess you could use a sapper charge if it doesn't. If it doesn't matter all that much to you. So. We're going to res the pet here. Feed the pet. Heal the pet. I like to have mend pet for these runs too. Because the mobs that you aggro. Uh, you know put a lot of debuffs on your pet. So you can clear some of that with the uh, mend pet. Okay we're going to mark the boss. So I know his location. And eat and drink. There should be a wandering eye that comes around here. We're definitely going to wait for the eye to come around before we move past this next part. And this next part is where we need to use our invisibility potions. So just be ready for that. We're going to wait here. Wait for the eye. Where is it? There, There it is. Okay, so when the eye gets in between these two packs right here, we're going to go ahead and kill them right now. Okay, so this next part, when the boss comes back around and the boss starts patrolling out here and he makes his like 90 degree turn right here, we're going to move up along this wall. We're going to target the far reaver and hit him with a concussive shot. And then the near reaver, we're going to hit with a scatter shot. And as soon as we do that, we're going to switch into cheetah and then move to the bottom of the ramp before we feign death. So here we go, get ready. Boss is coming around. So when the boss moves around, right around there, we can move up. All right, concussive on the far guy, scatter on the near guy, cheetah. Move to this line right here on the ground and then feign right here. As soon as we feign, we can pick ourselves back up so that our feign starts going on cooldown already because we might need it later as we move up here. So now, make sure Cheetah's already on and then invis pot and start fucking running. Okay, then we're going to cut through all these mobs right here. Reason I like the invis pot is because you get a little bit more time to make sure you clear this last group before you set up right here because this is where we need to be all right then we're going to summon the pet move back here put him on stay we're going to come up the ramp right here and put a frost trap on the ground then i'm going to jump up to this ledge right here send the pet in on this reaver back here as soon as we get aggro we're going to pet passive 
And now these reavers are going to run back as I run through. And then we're going to get ready to use our large sephorium charge on the door. What the fuck? How come my pet didn't fucking... Oh, this is bad. This is bad. Hold on. This is awkward. Put this guy on it. Slow this guy. Let me try and get behind this line of sight before I feign here. Feign right here. Hopefully it works. Whew, that's awkward. I might I must have accidentally hit my uh pet follow on, on accident. But we think on our feet. We we made it work. That's fine. Okay, revive my pet. Whew, close calls, man. Close calls. Shit happens sometimes. You gotta think on the fly. Or you just die and run back and try again. <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna put the pet on stay right here. And then we're gonna send him in on this warlock and then put him on, uh, put him back on passive. So here we go. Send the pet in. As soon as we get aggro over there, we're gonna send him back to his spot. And then we're going to run through. We're going to go for around this corner right here. Right before the boss. And then we're going to feign death when the pet dies. Pet dies. Feign death. And we're going to wait for these guys to fully reset in their spots over here. Before I revive my pet. Because sometimes they'll somehow just re-aggro onto your pet magically. So here we go. Summon the pet back out, heal him back up. And this next pull, we're gonna send him on the boss. On the boss right here, and then we're gonna send him back to these guys that we just passed. And then we're gonna run around. Okay, so here we go. Send him in on that guy. Turn around, target these guys, send them that way. And then we're gonna run past. The pet's gonna die this time because we're not gonna be able to um, outrange it to make it uh, despawn. So we just have to let him die, and then we're going to feign here. Same thing. I like to take a little peek around the corner just to make sure that they they fully reset over there. And then we're going to pick up our pet. Alright, one more time. We're going to send the pet in on these guys here. And then we're going to send them all the way back that way. And this wandering pack of hyenas, we need to kill those guys later. So here we go. Going to send the pet in over there. As soon as he gets aggro, I'm going to send him in on the next group. And we're going to wait for these guys to pass me before I go. Because sometimes they do that. I don't know how he just randomly hit me with something and dazed me. The pet de aggroed so now these guys should be running back towards me. I'm going to come to this corner right here and feign. And then they should reset to their spots right there. And now I can eat drink back to full and get the pet back up. And we're going to go for the, the boss kill now. After we... Oh, we got to find that uh, triple hyena pack that I was talking about earlier. So, aspect of the hawk... And drink back to full. Once we go up to this ramp here, these spirits up here, they don't attack you, but they do put you in combat. So if you need to fully reset uh, so that you can eat back to full, then you have to go behind the line of sight down here. Alright, that wandering hyena pack is over there. We're going to use these ledges up here to kite them around and kill them. So I'm going to send... I'm going to send the pet in here, hit them here. I'm going to turn Cheetah on so I can uh, kite up this hill. And I'm going to put the pet on follow so that my pet comes over here. And once the hyenas get a little bit closer to me, I'm going to use the ledge and jump down like this. And try to kill them. As they're running back towards me.
Once they close the gap on me, turn on uh, Aspect of the Monkey. And if you wanted to, you could Iron Grenade here just to get more, more of a space between you and them. Keep up Concussive Shot. If you're not careful with how you deal with these, they can actually kill you. So I'm playing. I'm trying to play like extra careful here. Alright, so now we got these guys down. We can actually set up for the boss kill. And how, we kill, how we're going to kill the boss is using these ledges uh, up and down, up and down. And making them toggle aggro between us and our pet. So the hardest part here is just getting a clean pull to start the encounter. And uh, But once you figure out how to get the clean pull, uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty simple. It just takes some time. It's not a fast kill. You have to actually do the mechanics of the fight and... It's a, you kind of whittle them down slowly. So I need to fully exit combat here because these spirits were keeping me in combat. So I moved down here so that they can't see me. Uh, so I can feign and eat and drink back to full. And then we'll get ready to set up for the kill. All right, so here we go. We're gonna set up on in between these pillars and then we're gonna use that macro that I showed you guys earlier, the eyes of the beast macro with the pet stay on it so we're gonna start right here i'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and get the eyes of the beast rolling okay we're gonna run up here and aggro aggro cho and then hit the dive or the sprint whichever thing your pet has and we're gonna run all the way up here behind this last little corner up here and put the pet on stay So here we go. Now the, the bosses are coming up. And every time you get you have a chance, you definitely want to make sure that you're um, mana draining Cho Rush here because he's going to keep healing the boss. And when the boss and or the other guy come down, you want to make sure that you feign behind a pillar. To make them switch aggro back to the pet. Mana drain this guy. Stand behind the pillar so he can't attack me. And then every time King Gordok comes up. Make sure you hit him before he attacks your pet to make him turn around. Because you want to make sure your pet stays alive this whole time. So before he gets to your pet make sure you attack him. And when these guys are coming back down. Feign death, and as soon as they turn around to go back the other way, you can sit and uh, drink your your mage water. Make sure you keep yourself topped off with the mana. Put a hunter's mark on this guy, and every time he comes back, wind up your big hitting abilities and smack him before he gets to your pet. And this is pretty much the, the name of the game. Pretty simple once you figure out how to juggle this. Get behind the line of sight here so you can't hit me. Make sure you keep that mana drain going. When when this guy gets too close, feign death. Make sure I always make sure I remove my hand from my mouse when I feign death because I don't want to accidentally cancel it by rotating my camera with my right click. Get behind the pillar, mana drain this guy. Switch to king, and make sure you hit him before he hits your pet. Rinse and repeat. And this is really all it takes to, to get the boss kill. You just have to keep toggling in between. And my feign death is not coming off cooldown yet. So I'm going to move to a further a further pillar so that I'm further away when I feign death. And as soon as they turn around, you can pick yourself up off the ground. Because your feign death doesn't go on cooldown until you pick yourself up, right? So you need to make sure your feign is uh, going to be ready for the next the next time. Okay, I'm going to wind up the aim shot here. Make sure I hit him before he hits my pet. Re-up the uh, hunter's mark on him. I could chase him a little bit more every time. Cho started aggroing me again because I used my... Uh, 
that's another thing you need to be aware of is like if you get um like passive procs like your aspect of the hawk you know proc uh or if you activate trinkets and stuff like that it'll put you back on the aggro table so these guys might turn around sooner than than expected so it's just something to be aware of Okay, mana drain this guy again, stand behind the pillar so he can't attack me. Okay, and then Cho, or the, the king is coming, so I'm going to feign. This is too close, I think. I, I really don't like to let him get that close before I feign death, just to be safe. And since I took longer to pick myself up off the ground this time, I'm going to wait as long as possible before I uh, hit... King Gordok, so that I have longer uh, time in between to make sure that my feign death comes back off cooldown by the time he gets down here. Okay, four seconds until feign. I don't want to be too close to Cho, so I'm going to move behind this pillar here and then feign. And then they're going to turn around and go back the other way. Get up and uh, drink my mage water. And then get ready to nuke King Gordok again when he comes around. Okay, switch to Cho, Mana Drain. Stand behind the pillar so he can't hit me. And then King Gordok is on his way back. I'm gonna move to the further pillar back here. Fane. Drink. Back and forth, back and forth. Slow and steady wins the race. Mana drain this guy. So there's uh, three different versions of Cho. There's a, a priest, a shaman, and a mage version. Apparently the priest is supposed to be the hardest uh, to deal with because he'll damage you and heal the boss. But either way, as long as you keep up these mana drains, sh it shouldn't really matter. Mana drain this guy. Fane. And see, that's a little bit too close for f for comfort. Uh, there's a chance there that the my Fane can, can get resisted because it's kind of based on line of sight and distance. So, oh, and I should have picked myself up off the ground a lot sooner than that because only now my Fane death is going on cooldown. So, things to remember. Wow, he randomly like charged my pet just now and took him down uh, a lot. So now I have to for real make sure that I hit I hit him a lot sooner to make sure that he uh, doesn't hit my pet. So now these guys were getting too close. So I actually jumped off the ledge this time to make sure I keep keep some distance before I feign. And now that my pet is down to like one hit, I have to hit this guy earlier now instead of letting him get too close. So I'm going to start winding up the aim shot as soon as he gets in range. Mana drain, auto attack once, get behind the pillar. King Gordok is coming back this way. I'm going to bandage myself now before I feign. Wait for him to get closer. Feign. He turns around. Drink. The good thing is when they get lower HP, they start moving slower too. So it gives you a lot more time to get ready. Okay, mana drain. Auto attack. Get behind the pillar. Wait for him to come around. Wind up the aim shot as soon as I'm in range of this guy right here. Don't let him hit my pet. I think we'll be able to kill him on the next turn around here. We'll just try to whittle him down a little bit more. Get behind the pillar, Fane. Alright, we're going to go for the kill this time here.
Wind up the aim shot. And there it is. We got the kill. So now, after you kill the king, uh, Cho will just go back and be an NPC over there. We're going to go ahead and grab our sweet, sweet loot off the boss. And then we can go get our tribute. Ooh, a barbarous blade. And leggings of destruction. Not bad if you actually uh, had characters that needed the gear. Okay, we'll get the buff first here. And I, th somebody told me, or I, or I saw from another video, that I think the tribute thing will be better if you go and talk to this uh, guy first. Right over here, Crom Crush. So before you talk to that dude up there that drops the tribute chest, like come over here and talk to Crom Crush. One more time, and then go back and talk to the guy for your tribute chest. And this run is really good if you have disenchanting, so it's guaranteed four large brilliant shards every time. Here, talk to the guy, and now we have our chest. And there's always major mana potions and major healing potions in here as well. Along with uh, some other things too. Uh, morning glory dews and and uh, roasted quail so there it is I'm gonna go ahead and DE all this stuff now and then of course you can grab your dire mall tribute buffs but thanks for watching that's how you do it I'll see you guys on another one peace